Yo, what it do, man? This is Grind Face and the Therapist, man. I'm Demetrius. I'm Sam. We've been together for 28 years, married for 23, 24, but who's counting? This is episode 21, man. We're going to get on the topic of entitlement. Entitled, entitlement. So I'm going to start it off, man. Why do people feel like they entitled f- for the hard work you put in? You're just supposed to just give them your fruits of your labor. I just I just don't un- understand that. Talk to me, Sam. I think people think family means that they're entitled to what someone else in their family has. Yes, I I I don't. Then that's the crazy thing. This is it's family really this this really believe like I guess you get you get the past goal for free or some shit. I don't. Well, I take that back. I don't. I don't think the word family because true family doesn't think like that. I think. Uh, having an opportunist mindset because you don't act like family until you need to. Or that owe me something mindset. Like they owe me something. I always was raised, I always raised my kids. Nobody owe you shit, but me and your mom, because we had y'all. We brought you into this world. We it's it's our job to provide everything for you. Your uncles, your auntie, your grandma, any cousins. Nobody owe you shit. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's a lot of mindset people be having. Like. Somebody get big, they owe me. We we family. They supposed to help me out and this and that. No, if I help you out, it's by choice. You can't force me to help you out at the end of the day. I think, you know, just what you said, owe me. You know, people feel like because I'm related to you, you owe me something. And, and to be honest, like, even though our kids, you know, they feel like we're in a certain position, they don't even really ask us for stuff. One thing I love about my kids, and I, I taught them this concept when they were younger, and, and I didn't realize how far the, the learning lesson would go, is when they would come home from, from school and I would have them sit down at the table and do their homework, I always told them, don't come and ask me how to do anything until you've done Try. everything you know how to do. Come to me after you've done it, and then there's stuff you you don't know. And so... They would come to me when it was that completed all their homework and it may be a, been a few things that they needed help with. And I didn't even realize what I was teaching them, but it has transitioned into a life lesson. My kids, when they are going through something financially, we are like their last choice. It's not the first choice. They don't come and say, you know what? I'm short on this bill. I'm going to call my parents. We're their last option. And it has taught them to figure things out and and figure it out before they come to us. So as a, as a at a young age, I didn't realize I was teaching them critical thinking skills, problem solving. Like, you know, I can't just go to my parents. I need to figure it out. So it's frustrating when you see other people, they'll go straight to you. And it's like, but my kids don't even come straight to me. And it's, it's not, it, I just take it as the usury. It's so, it's, I don't think people feel like it's just the straight I'm trying to use you type mentality. Like I could really help somebody that's out there on the grind trying to do it. They out there working their asses off and shit just won't open up for them. I will help you like that. But when you ain't putting no effort in shit, then try to hit me up with a sob story. When you don't even fucking talk to me, that's usury. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's where I feel like that's disrespect. If you don't talk to a person, why are you hitting them up and asking for something? And the person had the nerve to say, like, I don't, everybody don't got it like you. I came from the bottom with nothing. Nobody helped me. You know what I'm saying? My own mom didn't help me. Out there on my own, 17 years old, getting it out the dirt. So all this hard work I put in to put myself in a better position of my family, you think I'm just going to hand it away to somebody because they feel like I owe them something? Hell no. Nah. I don't give a fuck if you don't like me. I ain't, I ain't no sucker. You ain't going to get off on, over on me at the end of the day. I worked too hard. I came from nothing. And I understand you got to put in the work. Shit just don't fall out the sky to you. And that mindset of usury ain't going to get you nowhere. This sounds personal. Oh, it's very personal. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because people always want to paint the person that succeeded and get it out like they are asshole and they just, they change and this and that. But no, my phone don't ring at all. Nobody calls me. You know what I'm saying? Check on me and nothing. Certain people do. 
Exactly. A few that's in my circle that I deal with. But the people that's asked me for shit, I don't hear from them. So don't be mad at me when I say no. It's easier for, for me to say no. Because you don't, you ain't really concerned about my health. You you don't care about my, you know what I'm saying? You're just out here trying to use me. And I don't like usury. At the end of the day, I do not like usury at all. You sound upset. Very. But um, but why do people just feel entitled? That's 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 the crazy part though. It's just that entitlement and tal- and that usury. I hate that use. I never I never use nobody. And for people to always you try don't. to use I me, I will say that I will it, give you it's, that. It's even times when I used to get, when you was younger, I used to tell you, "Don't ask people for shit. Let, let's get it out here, figure it out ourselves." It would be my dad that lived in the same apartment complex as me, and we didn't have a car. And I'd be like, "I'm going to ask my dad for a ride to the store," and he would be so mad. Like, "No, you're not. Don't ask them for a ride." And I'm like, but this is my dad, so he's never been the type to ask or go. And 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 if he asks. It was his last resort, and if you said no, he never asked you again. Yeah, because I, I I feel like if you're not gonna put the effort in and try, it's just I don't know. It's, it's just it's just weird how people how people move, and then they just try to blame you. That's and that's what's what's mind boggling to me. It's like they they trying to use you, but you too smart to be used, and now you're the bad guy. <laughs> it's funny because you're upset, but. It's funny to me. And the reason why it's funny to me, because I feel like every time God gets ready to level up, puts you on another platform or, you know, when you begin to increase, he always shows you things that are about to happen. So for me, it's funny because I know what the, what this is about is because was this is just small, but it's going to be more and more as we increase. And so I'm comfortable with the fact knowing, you know, this is what it's going to be. And, and I think you're upset because of the way it happened. But people are going to be people. And I've learned in life you can't change people, but I'm also not going to allow you to change me. True. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's not It's not changing me. I mean, I still help the people that I know. No, I'm not saying it's genuine, changing you. You know what I'm saying? It's just I got discernment. I can see through the bullshit real clear. And people really think you can't see through the bullshit. Well, I don't think people care if you can see through it or not. They're just after their own agenda. Um, and I read an article. I don't know where I read it at, but it was saying with African-Americans, typically they can never elevate because once they get to a certain position, their family members are asking for so much. So they can never get to the point where they're because they're always reaching back and giving back. Sometimes you got to let a person get to the des- destination before they could give you a ride too. And people don't understand that. Uh, people just see small things to us small, to them big. It's like, oh, you know, they have a lot of money. Or they're doing, And it's like, no, we're not. We're just making smart business decisions to put ourselves in a certain position to be able to do certain things. Exactly. It's like, and it's like people don't want to put the work in. I mean, it was times... Basically, I stayed home. You went to school. You stayed home. I went to school. I mean, it's, it's years of sacrificing and putting in work. You worked at jobs you didn't like. I worked at jobs I didn't like. It's like for somebody that don't put in the work and expect you to just hand over all your fruits, it's fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's like I wish I would have just kick it on my ass and chill all day and just expect somebody else to send me a fucking cash app, me some shit because I'm doing bad. You know what I'm saying? That's it's just the mindset of people. It's like we got a story too. We've been at the dirt bottom, but the thing is, we didn't stop. We kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing. And we didn't have our. And hand you know what I'm saying? And it it, it it was bad times. You was homeless. You know what I'm saying? Don't it, it was crazy times that we had, but we never basically put our burdens on the next person. But that's what I think. I think because people don't know our story. I had someone tell me years ago, and it made me so mad. They were like, you don't understand because you didn't have a hard life. And I'm like, just because I don't walk around Victim and mentality. show what I go through, it's a whole lot that's going on now that was in 2022. But because I don't walk with my head down doesn't mean I don't feel, doesn't mean I don't hurt, doesn't mean I don't go through. It just means I don't I don't get on social media and say what I'm going through. I don't 
become victim and want people to feel sorry for me. And I think people don't understand just because you don't see what someone's going through doesn't mean they're not going through anything. The exactly. difference is, is just the way they're going and through. And the difference is most, some people don't put their burdens on others. That's the key thing. We never put our burdens on others. You know what I'm saying? It was times our refrigerator was fucking bare empty. Had to feed the kids. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no, we ain't going to go ask. You know, it's just crazy. Never put our burdens on anybody. And it's it's crazy that everybody feel like their burdens is our problem. You know Why what I'm saying? Why do you think that is, though? I, I, I have no idea. It's just, I don't know, man. It, and it's... It, I don't know why. That's crazy. I can't, I don't even got an answer for that. It's like, ever since we was younger, everybody always felt like their burdens is our problems. It's always coming. You know I what I'm saying? I think that goes with being a go-to person. Um, and, and you have to realize, too, with being, if you're the go-to person in your family, at some point, God had to show me, if you keep being their God, when will you come to me? And basically what he was saying was, if you keep solving their problems, when are they gonna when are they gonna go to me? Because we always had we never had a, a place, a home where a family member didn't live. There's always been a month where somebody called and needed some money or needed help or needed or something, always. Um, which I'm fine with giving, but I feel like there's a difference between giving and enabling. And I I think it's the difference from giving and using. You know what I'm saying? Some people use it. Now, if, now, this is what I call usury. If you you asking, you send 10 people the same sob story to get some money, that's a usury person well, that's a right scam. there. You know what I'm saying? It's, well, that's a scam. It's like, and it's crazy because we talk to other person. Oh, they, they told me the same shit. They sent me the same message. Like, that's just, just usury type shit. And if people feel like you can't see through that shit. What advice? And I'm the bad guy now. (laughs) Like, shit. So I can't wait till they start making up lies. You know what I'm saying? I probably all kind of lies in the streets. You know what I'm saying? What do you say? Get out your feelings. What could we resolve? No, what advice would you give someone that is dealing? Because clearly The advice I would would give somebody is just put in the work and keep trying. God's going to bless you. You know what I'm saying? And how, okay, how God will bless me. Um, basically by putting in the work, God will touch the right heart and be like, Hey man, here, here's 20 bucks here, 50. I, I just, I felt like you needed this because I, I feel like if you, you, you're in a good spirit and you're doing everything you're doing and you really out there trying to do stuff, God's going to open the doors for you. And he'll send different people. Yeah. And he was saying his people, but when you don't want, if you're not, cause you, you know what you're, what you're doing, you know, you know, you ain't trying to put in the work, you know, the angle you're trying to work. So God is not going to bless it. But if you out there really trying your hardest and you really in your prayer closet, you out there doing, I believe God will, will open up doors for you. Well, let me ask you about your experience. So tell me about experience where you felt like, you know, you were trying your hardest and God finally came through or came through. Oh, you put me on the spot. Like I was trying my hardest. I don't know if, they, if the guy can, I don't know. I, it's, it was one time I needed um, car insurance for my car. Nobody wanted to um, help me get car insurance. My mom, nobody, everybody turned me down. They felt like I'm the irresponsible one in the family, which I don't know how they yeah, got that. Yeah, I don't know that. how they came to you that know conclusion. What I'm saying? Nobody would help me get a car. They wanted to co-sign for me. Basically, I'm catching the bus with my kids, grocery shopping. I'm just on the grind. I was like, okay, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, the position God put me in today as it showed me like it just it taught me to put it in the work yourself and don't expect nothing from nobody. And it is really instilled in me since I was a teenager. It's like nobody is obligated to help me. You're not obligated to help me. I'm gonna go out there and help myself and put myself in a better position because I want more. So you are you saying like you feel like God allowed you to be in that situation to build character. I, I I believe so. To really to build me as a stronger man of providing for my family. I think so too. I think when you basically have the mindset of, you know, I'm gonna go get it. I think doors will open for you. And when you keep asking people for the same thing, you know, people eventually get burnt out. As a matter of fact, this individual. <laughs> Demetrius sent the text message out to our kids. And the crazy thing is all our kids was like, except for my oldest, like, oh, 
this person always asks me for money too, to the point where my son had told him like, Hey, you can't keep getting comfortable asking for money. And at that point, I don't think people understand is like you end up burning your own bridges to where you won't have those resources. Cause Papa, our son, he's, he's very compassionate and giving, but once you burn that bridge, there's no crossing back. Cause it's that, the usury people really believe you can't see the usury, you know? And the thing is, it's like, Put in the work. A lot of people just don't want to put in the work. We all got a sad story. Everybody, everybody on this motherfucker got a sad story. Well, but I'm are not you gonna, gonna know. put the work? I don't in? think everybody has a sad nah, story. Listen, everybody listen, been through some you're not listening to what I'm saying. I'm not saying I don't believe everyone has a sad story because I have a story, but I don't feel like it's sad, and it's not sad because it made me who I am. You define if it's a sad story or if it's basically a testimony. That's a choice. I mean, it's I'm, I'm gonna say sad, but it's moments in your life that you be at your lowest lowest moments, and you don't see no way out. True. You know what I'm saying? Everybody experienced that, but right. the, the difference is, is you gonna let it overtake you, or you gonna fight through it? Well, I think we we're in a generation of a society where everything is fast paced, everything is microwave, everything is is you get it quick. And so I don't think the work ethic of I have to do something really resonates with everyone. True. And I think people watch social media and they're like, oh, this is an influencer. or This person's doing this. But even if you ask an influencer, they didn't just make one video and blow up. Years. It's dedication and work. Years and dedication. I've been doing this grind face shit since 2011. And, and it still ain't where I wanted to be. It's still putting in work. And you know what I'm saying? It's just people feel like it, it is, it's bigger than what it is, which I really know it, 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 it's not all that big. You know what I'm saying? It just got some street buzz, but it's still way more potential, but I'm still putting in the work. So why I'm going to take my fruits and just roll them out to everybody that's not putting in the work? And my thing is, instead of asking for a handout, ask how can you help? But well, nobody wants to help you build. They just want to they want to reap the benefits of your building because no one actually comes. I've had a few people and these are the people that have been dedicated with me for years. Um, always what you need help with. It's never what can I get is what do you need me to do? And I think that's way more powerful when you come to a person asking, what do you need help with? I see you over here trying to build something. How can I help? Or look, I got these talents. Can I can I help you utilize these talents to help build what you you build? People don't. It's just be family. I owe you something. That's just the mindset people be having. Like I don't want to put in no work. I don't want to ask you if you need some help. Nothing. Well, I mean, obviously, if they was willing to put in the work for you, they'll be willing to put in the work for, for themselves. Self. Yeah. So yeah. they they they're not going to. So what what kind of entitlement? How how you feel about entitlement? Because I you know I ran it on for like fifteen minutes. Yeah, you know off what I'm your saying. Emotions. Not in my emotions. It's just clarifying that people. It's like I wasn't raised with a silver spoon in my mouth. I think I by was, now you know everybody what I'm saying? knows that. No, people don't. They just think it's, it's just it happened overnight type shit. You know what I'm saying? It's been hard work and it's just man, can't wait till we make a movie out of our life. It's, it, it's crazy. I think a lot of people would be surprised to know different things that happen behind the scenes. Yeah, I mean, it's um, this. But man, what's your question? How you feel about um, people feeling entitled to your hard work? I don't. <laughs> I don't. That it, it doesn't bother me because at the end of the day, I know what every I know what this life comes with. I know God showed me who I was going to be years ago. And when you experience so many different things, I don't think anything surprises me anymore. I remember somebody told you God put you in this position so you could bless them with their business. For me to basically <laughs> do their business for them. So I think I've, I've had so many different, I've had so many different experiences. I don't, I think I'm numb to it. Like, so whatever comes next, I don't think I'm going to be surprised because I've experienced so much with people that, at one point, I was like, I'm tired and don't even want to deal with people. But when you deal with so many different experiences, it doesn't phase you. I think your phase, because people typically don't go to you. They go to me because they think I'm the nice one. 
So I think you're now experiencing where people are coming directly to you. No, I'm not. I, I'm not. The, the accent is it's just the, the disrespect response, which pissed me off. You know what I'm saying? If somebody, if you ask somebody, every, people have the right to say no. So trying to come at me because I said no was a disrespect. In the past, I already gave you money before. So now that I say no, it's a motherfucking problem. That's the word that got me upset. You know what I'm saying? Because I gave you money before in the past in the history. You never reached out and said, hey, how you doing? It's just you took the money you ran. So now that you need money again and I say no, you got disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? That's what got me pissed off. I don't know. I'm just not surprised, especially by who it is. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm just looking at you and I understand your frustration. I'm like, oh, I want to hug you. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not surprised at all. So I guess, again, for me, it's like when you deal with so much and, and you you go through so many situations with people that, Nothing surprises me anymore. And especially the people that do it are with this situation. I'm definitely not surprised. I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't have expected anything else. Yeah. So people that feel entitled, man, um, nobody owe you shit, but your parents, you know, at the end of the day. And I think at a certain was- age, when you become an adult, I don't even feel like they, I don't, I been on my own since I was 16. I don't, if you ask my parents, it was rare that I've, come to them and ask I don't ask my I don't feel like it's their responsibility now that I'm a grown woman I didn't think it was their responsibility when I became of age to take care of me no I think once you start moving and want to claim that you're a grown-ass person it's your, not your parents, your parents, your parents responsibility out the window. yeah get out and make it happen you know what I'm saying but if you still, you know, saying moving like a kid and is, is a kid, I mean, your parents just as still, a yeah, as a you know minor, yeah. as a minor. But at sixteen, I didn't have a choice. I wasn't looking them for to my parents to solve my problems. I had to figure it out, and I guess that's the difference, is because we had to figure it out so young, so we didn't feel like we had a fallback plan. You know, many times people want to make people their their backup plan, but when you don't have a backup plan. You have to be resilient and get in that thing and like, hey, I got to figure out a solution. But honestly, I thank God for it because even in business, when my back is against the wall, I will figure that thing out. And I think that's where where it's, we act because we know it's possible because we've been through it. You know what I'm saying? So we know when you're at your lowest, it's possible to get up and start running again because we've been there. So for a, a person playing victim – that, that sob story don't move me because I know if you put in the work, it's possible. Why are you looking at me all like? Because <laughs> they really got you in your feelings. You like, keep going back to it. They really pissed like, you off. I ain't going back. I'm just covering the topic. No, you upset. All right, then you can move the topic on. Go ahead. Move it. Cause I'm just looking at you like, okay. It's gonna be talked about. It's not gonna hit my line with that shit. Don't hit my line, cause I I'm very rude. But go ahead. I don't know. In life, I think it's good to teach your kids, and and anybody that's listening, if you have kids or you know aspiring to have them in the future, always teach your kids to be problem solvers. I feel like when you teach your kids to solve problems, they will never have many. I don't have a lot of problems because God has given me the keys to figure it out, to strategize, you know, not to just be like, oh, I need this person. I will sit, tell the truth. I will sit and figure some stuff out Mm -hmm. and will not move until I get answers to figure some stuff out. That's the same thing with my kids. They used to be like, I'm hungry. I'll be like, go make you something. (laughs) They learn how to make noodles and sandwiches real quick. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, at a certain age, you you need to teach these kids how to really take care of themselves. But if you pay attention to Mumu. Learn how to wash your clothes. But if you pay attention to Mumu, which is our oldest, she's not going to call us. She's going to figure it out. And that's a good thing. And even when she has to ask, you could tell it's like, I really don't want to. But you think that's a bad thing too, though? No, I don't. I don't because I think my kids know they can always come to me for whatever. But I don't want to have the kids where it's like, oh, my parents are going to bail me out. Because if God forbid something happened to you and me today, what would they do? So, no, I don't think it's a bad thing. They know 
that we're always going to be here, but I don't never want them to feel like, oh, my parents is my first resort. I could just go ask my parents. No, you need to figure it out first. True, true. At least attempt to try some try some methods before, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to try this, I'm going to try that, I'm going to try that. Fuck it. Let me call now. Because if you look at adults or different people that they're always asking, look, just look at their life. And, and that's why I say I feel kind of bad for people that grew up with money, that grew up with, with like, well, because their kids because don't, don't it, know hard work. It, not even not knowing hard work. It just always makes me wonder if they lost everything. If they lost everything, would they know how to survive? True. Because it's a whole different Because it's, it's been given to you. You've that, never had to I work think for that, it. Yeah, that's a benefit when you work for something and, and come to the top. You never had to strategize. You know how to, you know, if you fall, you know how to get back up. And you, you know, you even know how to let, play in the dirt because you came, came from the dirt. That's my point. So for me, no, some people be like, oh, well, they should be able to. Yeah, they could come to me, but I don't ever want to be the first resort. I want my kids to use critical. That's why God has given us a brain to think. To problem solve, right? That's critical skills, critical thinking skills. Okay, but let's go. Let's go switch this up. Now let's let's take it. Do you feel like you do you feel like parents are entitled? Because I I, I heard this um this one athlete got it big. It depends. And it, his mom still stay in the hood. It's like do do you feel like a child is is basically obligated to take their parents out their hood? It depends. Depends. Go ahead. And I'm going to tell you why. I de- I don't think because you have a kid, it makes you a parent. You know, you could give birth. You could you could donate your sperm, but are you really a mother and father? Because many people have kids, but they're not parents, right? So I think people have an entitlement that they have kids, so they think their kids should owe them something or, you know, buy them things. And But it's like, but are you a parent? True. But I feel like if you're a parent, there should be a sense of I want to give back to my to, to to my parents. You understand what I'm saying? Like even for Christmas, right? Even for holidays, my kids are two of them are adults. They get just as much as the baby who's still a minor for I still give to my kids. I'm not oh they're 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 adults. No, I'm still going to do for my kids and do for my kids randomly. Just do for them because I want cuz they're my kids. I should want to do that as a parent, right? So when you have a parent that's truly a parent that pours into you and love you, you should want to just give to your parents. I think that's the difference with entitlement. But a true parent, a true parent is not going to even expect from their kids. I don't expect from my kids. My kids just do. But yeah. there's not going to be a situation where I'm a guilt trip my kids if they don't. Yes, I tell my kids, they always say, well, dad, is, he, he like expensive stuff. I say it's, when it comes to my kids, any kind of gift is I appreciate you know what I'm saying? It could be a car written, you know, happy birthday, Merry Christmas, whatever. It's not the, about the price of the, the gift because I could buy my own gifts. You know what I'm saying? It's just the thought that matters to me. And see, with me, with our kids, it's time. I don't care about your gift. I, I want your time. And, and I think they do a good job at it. You know, they come home. They come spend nights. They, they spend the time. They invest the time. And that's all I ask for my kids. My kids were multimillionaires tomorrow. I don't expect anything, right? But I know they would give it because of what I poured into them. So, no, I don't think parents should feel entitled. Because if anything, you should just you should just be happy for your kid. But I think many times, sometimes parents are jealous of their children because they didn't accomplish what they would. Their kids accomplished something they didn't. But to me, I think each generation should get better. I want my kids to surpass me. And I feel like their kids should surpass them and it should keep going. But what about them parents that invest in everything like their kids in sports? And I say they in sports, they invest in time and effort and money. But why? And, but And then, yeah, exactly. But why? So then why? Okay, because I'm going to invest in whatever my kids want to do, right? I'm going to, if that's what they want to do, I'm going to back them and invest it. But sometimes parents live through their kids and they're investing in these things with the hopes of the come up. So it's like, are you investing in it because your child, your child truly loves and desires and it's something fun for them? Or are you doing it because you see it a way out for you? 
Yes, you're entitled because you want to rent for that payday. Yeah, so it's like you're using your kid. Pimping your kid. Yeah, you're pimping your kid out to basically set you up for your future because you didn't have the diligence or the willpower or whatever, the work ethic to put yourself in that position. Amen. You get a coin on that. Let's drop the coin on that. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times parents feel like their kids is their their meal ticket. They they stop they stop putting in the work. You know what I'm saying? They stop trying. So now they they hope their kids become that success because they feel like they're gonna be entitled to everything, all the fruits they 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 earn. And I think that's a bad way of thinking. I ain't never looked at my kids and be like, oh, they gonna no. I want my job to be to put them in a position. And I think as as a culture of a lot of where we come from, a lot of our parents ain't really about shit. So it's like... <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Well, I am. Like I said, a lot of our parents ain't really about shit, and they look for us, the children, to basically help their better life out. Because I'll be watching a lot of shows. The first thing people will say, oh, if I win this million dollars, I'm buying my mom a house. Shouldn't your parents already own something? Shouldn't you know what I'm saying? And I feel like that that's I'll a failure. You know, it's like why do every time a kid come across a big lump of something, they gotta buy their parents a house. I'm gonna buy my parents a car. You know what I'm saying? The parents need to be putting in the work. And that's why I feel like a lot of these the well, my generation of parents is, is don't be having shit and don't have no effort in putting this shit and expecting their kids to elevate them to the next level. I can't say, because I know a lot of people that their parents were about something. So I think it just depends. But I do understand what you're saying. Anytime someone has, like, an opportunity, they do say they want to take care of their parents. or they Almost as if their parents haven't put themselves in that position to do it on their own. Yes. And that's a lot of times in the black culture you, you find that, you know. I don't think it's just the black community, though. I ain't gonna just put well, that well, on. That's us. the only community I know. Shit, that's all I'm just saying. Because I know the the Asian people, they feel like, I guess the kids at a certain age, they gotta take it's in there. They have to take care of their parents. Well, I don't think it's you know they, they have to. I think it's cultural, and I think I respect it. I I, I honestly respect I how don't. no I, no no. I, you no, you listen, gonna get what you put into me. Listen to what I'm saying. I respect it as the Asian culture moves as a family as a unit. They care for their elderly. What I don't respect about American culture is we don't care for our elderly. But does your elderly care as the, the, the children? No, I'm saying that they, well, my grandparents, my I is, got. I, you, I, I look at it as this. What you pour into me at a time will come back poured into you. Now, if you ain't never poured in nothing to me, don't expect me because you're at a certain age and you can't Listen, do nothing for yourself for me to pour into you. I will say I have phenomenal grandparents. I I will say that. I had grandparents didn't pour into me. Okay. So two of my grandparents were in the hospital. One of them is still in the hospital. One was released like what, a week ago? Two weeks ago? Anyways, I'm going to go see my grandfather. So he was in the hospital over a month. And because he was in the hospital over a month, he has to learn how to walk again because obviously he wasn't using his legs, which is crazy, right? So I went to go see him like last week, and uh, we were talking and reminiscing him, myself, and my grandmother. Um, and they started telling me all these stories when I was a kid. They tell them a million times and I always listen and laugh like it's the first time hearing it. And so I forgot. Oh, we were talking about – um. They were asking me where were the kids at? and I was like, you know, granddad already told you they don't live with me. So he's like, you put them out. Da, da, da. It's like, I didn't put them out. You know, I was explaining my son left to move to San Diego. But anyways, to make a long story short. So for some reason, we got on the topic of well, uh, me being on my own. So I was like, well, granddad, they're grown. You know, I was on my own since I was 16. And he was like, you were on your own since you were 16. Like, what happened? And so I told him. And he was like, well, why didn't you come and ask me? Could you come stay with me? To make a long story short, he broke down crying. 89-year-old man broke down crying and was like, I wasn't there for you. And I'm like, no, nah, granddad, like, you're a phenomenal grandfather. You've always been there. And for me, because they were that to me, I will never not be there and do the same for them. But what I'm saying is as Americans, 
we don't respect the elderly. We don't. You can see an elder person get on the bus or standing and you won't even give up your chair. I'm not saying you specifically, but I'm saying American way of thinking. I'm going to get up. Um, we were in Egypt and it was a Indian lady from India. And um, I think it's their culture that they expect it. But don't, yeah, don't act entitled. She did act yeah, entitled, like which almost made me be like, lady, look, I was already going to give up my seat because she was an elderly lady. So when she got on, um, I was in a position to get up, but she did her head like get up, which I thought was disrespectful because don't be entitled to it. But I'm going to do it because I respect the elder, the el- you know, the elder, the elderly population. But that's the only thing where I understand what you're saying is like if you kind of like going back to not being a parent, but have this entitlement mentality like your kids owe you something when you wasn't even a parent. And people be like, but that's your parent. Yeah, but at the same time, just because you have a kid doesn't mean that you are really parenting a child. That's what I'm saying. Um, But I do think regardless if you know a person or not, an older person or not, I do think there's a level of respect. You know what I'm saying? Like if you see someone that's elderly being disrespectful, dis- being disrespected, I would step in like, hey, that's an older person. You need to chill out. And I think that's where I admire the Asian culture when it comes to their elderly, they really take care. Like Americans, oh, we're just going to throw you in a, a nursing home. No, they're going to take care of theirs. And I respect it wholeheartedly. Because I'm big on that. <laughs> That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Because you have, you have, you have that experience. So you, you, know you don't have that experience. Yeah, exactly. I don't have that experience. Um, So my mindset is totally different. And as, as seeing an elderly person like on the bus or something. Okay, but yes, let, hold on, but let's seat, let's you know take saying? that That's back no though. Problem. Because I do kind of feel like you've had that experience. Because one thing I will say about my family, they've always embraced you like their own. True. So you have had but a I'm grandparent about, experience. I'm talking about as a, a juvenile, as a grandparent pouring into you. But you, you we were together saying? as juveniles. No, well, I didn't have that. Like, like I said, so like I said, as a grandparent, like into, weekends, them uh, come to pick yes, you up. Like you know, what I'm saying, going to your your, your your grandparents' house, and you know, what I'm saying, just that that grandparent pouring. I never had that. No. As an adult, I, I experienced your grandparents, yes, but as a juvenile growing up, like no, didn't experience that. But at the same time, I still. If I see an old person, a handicapped person on the bus, or, or you know, I'm gonna open the door and help them, assist them out with, you know, what I'm saying. So that's I still would do that, but I feel like that entitlement as a a parent, a grandparent, or whatever. If you ain't poured into that that person, don't expect or think you're entitled for that person to pour out to you when they get somewhere. Well, I think that's you reap what you sow, right? And I, I believe in that wholeheartedly. I think it goes both ways, even though it's a bl- biblical principle. I think. You reap you you reap a harvest from the seed you have sown, and I don't think you should expect something from some from a. I don't think you should basic basically expect some something from someone when you haven't given anything, and I think that should just be mentality. And period. Even, and even if you did give any, you give, still you shouldn't, shouldn't expect, expect yeah because yeah. I feel like. If you pouring into somebody, you're genuine pouring in with no motives. You ain't expecting nothing, and that's and. and I guess a lot of people don't do that because it's it's a lot of motives. People moving motives like I'm going to do this because I see the potential in that person. So I'm going to go to all their games and stuff like that because they might go pro. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you see. So that's calculated. Yes, it's calculated. And so you're going to invest and make sure you're present in the high school games because everybody's talking about this person. They might go pro. So I'm going to make sure I, I'm invested in this person because if they go pro, I'm going to get on that train too. And see that that's motive, you know what I'm saying? That's opportunity. That's usury to me. It and is. people feel like you don't see it. You see that shit. It's very clear as day. You know. What about the people that try to jump on the train though when it's already going? It, it's too late. You, you already see the train moving. It, it's it's I, I say, if you already see a train moving, you want to jump on. Jump on with a talent and something to help make the train go faster. But if you just want to jump on the train and just have a seat with your feet up, nah, that that ain't gonna work. 
You know what I'm saying? Because I, don't get me wrong, when the ball start rolling, people could come in late but bring great value to whatever you're doing. You know what I'm saying? You can't not because sometimes True. you're just late to the game, but what your talents and what you could bring to the thing could help the thing grow faster. But it's a difference when you just want to come on and do nothing and put nothing towards the business or whatever as usury. Do you feel like you've ever experienced that where people try to come and jump on? Oh, yes. Yes, I experienced that a lot of times. And then I just fall off. You know what I'm saying? Just disappear. The brand shut the brand down and all the all the opportunities just disappear. I did it like, like three times to be grind face so far. You know what I'm saying? Just shut down, switch lane, and you can see all the people just flake away. Because when you ain't buzzing no more, that's when the, the people feel like, uh, ain't no, I can't gain nothing from it, so I ain't supporting that shit. I see it all the time. Do you feel like it's easier to spot opportunists now based on everything you've been through? Oh, very. Cause I, um, and that's the sad part because sometimes my guard is so much put up. If I might come across some genuine people, but I already see uh, I've been through the road. So it's like, nah, you suspect, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's, it's like a, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Because some people, it's some, it's some genuine people out there that really want to help, but it's ninety percent more of opportunity. It's more opportunities than people you know that saying? are genuine. So it's hard to filter out to the real solid people, and sometimes you might miss them people because you've been hurt so many times, and it's like I ain't gonna give it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna give someone else opportunity. But coming into 2023, when we were on the cruise, I really sought God on that cruise. Like I can't even tell you. And and my mindset now is I'm only doing what God tells me to do. I'm not doing more than what he tells me or less than what he tells me. I'm only doing specifically what he tells me. And I think there's no room for error. Before I was trying to do and I was trying to give and I was trying to, it's like, no, nah, I'm not doing that no more. Unless God tells me to align with this person, I'm not. You know, unless God, t- I'm not doing anything out of that. Because that's where I'm going to be safe. And I, I can't argue with that. That's a good move, you know. Because sometimes you like, oh, well, I'm doing this is a good thing. And you're doing it with pure, pure intentions. intentions. Yeah, and but then back and stab you in the back. That and it's like then what you're doing is being questioned. And it's like you get tired of explaining what you're doing from a genuine place. So it's like, you know what? If I just do exactly what God tells me to do. There's no room for error. Hey Amen. Look, you get a coin for that. If it's God's plan, there's no error for it. When it's your plan, it's a whole lot of room for error. It is. Because you're like, oh, I'm just being nice. And now it's like, I'm more quiet. I'm more reserved. I'm more, even though that was me already. But sometimes you let people in. It's like, nah, unless God says it, I'm not moving. So y'all hear that from the words from her mouth. If God ain't tell her, she ain't moving. No, I'm not. Because people be like, oh, I've had somebody reach out to me not too long ago. Was like, oh, yeah, you know, I feel like God sent me to you. And like, no, I love when they use God, God ain't told God, me that. The, the God card, they try to bring your guard down. And it's like, nah, God. And, and I told him, I said, you know, you know, I respect the fact that you reached out this, this, this and this. And you you see me as a person of value to want me to do this, this, and this. But God didn't give me those ex- instructions to move with you in that way, and therefore I can't. And I think a lot of times people be just be afraid to say no because they don't want to be looked at as the bad guy. I don't care about being looked at as the bad guy. I think many times my heart has got me in trouble. Oh, plenty of times. I told you a lot. Yeah, so I think not – I didn't care like, oh, they're, they're going to think she's a bad – no, I've been past that in my 20s. I think – me just doing things from a, a being nice and then you know what I'm saying and it backfiring like but and then I, God like but I never told you to do that anyway yeah because you, you you always took it like if I was in that situation I would how to be treated like this and this and that if I you know what I'm saying so you always put yourself in the the person's problems and move off that right and I thought I was doing a good thing until 2022 God was like no Stop doing that. And I think I had to go through that because with every new, with every new situation presents, because I've never been a CEO, you know, I've never, I honestly would like, if I could do things myself, cause I know it's going to get done. 
I know how it's going to get done and I know it's going to be efficient, effective, and it's going to be done when I want it to. So being owning a company and having to deal with different personalities and different is it could be mentally taxing. And one of the things God was telling me was like, you can't give everybody act. And he just access to you and start showing me different strategies and was like, you were doing, giving way too much access than I've ever told you to give. And so I got myself in trouble because I'm like, oh, but if I was an employer, I would want my employer. But he's like, but I didn't tell you to do that. She did. And I'm like, oh, that's why I took something. Got it. I I took these hits because you were teaching me and preparing me. And so now people may think, oh, she closed. No, I'm not doing anything that God is not telling me to do moving forward. I'm not saying anything that God is not telling me to say. So it's going to look like, oh, she's reserved. She's quiet. She, No, because I've learned just because I feel and I think this is a good thing. It not it may be a good thing, but it may not be a God thing. And I'll go back to this. I remember being trying to steal God's glory. No, not even that. Being in grad school, I'll never forget this. Um, We had a conversation in class and it was saying like, you know, if a homeless person needed money, our food, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, I would, I would basically get them food. And I remember doing something for somebody and end up getting hurt in the end. Cause it ended up basically coming back on me, but I was really doing a good deed. And I'm not going to go all into the details. And I, I kept, I was mad. Like I was really doing a good thing and I ended up getting hurt in the midst of doing something good for somebody. And God was like, just because it's good doesn't mean it's me. And I'm like, what? He was like, just because it's good doesn't mean it's me. And he gave me an example of this. He said, you can see somebody homeless and they're out in front of the store asking for money. He said, to be do a good deed would be to give them money, right? Because they're hungry. So you think you're doing a good thing. He said, but what if you gave them that money and they took that money and overdosed and did drugs? Was it a good thing? So just because it seems like a good thing doesn't mean it's me telling you to do it. And I was like, whoa, because it's real. Just because somebody's in a situation doesn't mean it's your, it's for you to help your assignment and everybody's not your assignment. And so I had to understand that, but then taking that into a business. So I got that down to a science in my personal life, but I had a new opportunity and challenge come in 2020 when I became a CEO well, 2021, because I didn't open the business to 2021. So then when I became a CEO, now I had to get this down to a science. Because even though I got people down to a science and how I move in my personal life, I was moving different because it wasn't personal. It was my business. And God told me, no, 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 no. You keep thinking you're doing good things, but I'm not telling you to do it. And this is why you keep getting hit and hurt in the midst of because you're moving out of good intentions, but it's not me. And I was like, Ooh, so you got to think sometimes, yes, it's a good thing, but are you the one that's supposed to do it? Because again, you could feed the man in front of the store and give him the money. But if he takes that money in OD, was it a good thing or was it a bad thing? Well, wouldn't that fall in the same, same thing as a person coming saying, I'm just here to deliver the message and whatever you do, do with it is on you. No, I mean, no, because this is the thing. When I'm moving from a good place, I could be moving from a good place, but the question is that I consult God. That's what I'm saying. Okay. I'm not moving unless God tells me. In this new season moving forward, I'm not doing nothing more or nothing less than what he says. Because I could see somebody and be like, oh, this is a good thing to talk and then kind of find out they have misinterpreted everything I said. Yeah. But he never told me to do it. It would have never been misinterpreted had I listened and asked him first. So that's where I'm at. Because when you move according to what he's telling you, you can't go wrong. So people, before you think you're doing a good deed, ask God what you're supposed to be doing. Is, is it his good deed, not yours? Cause I guess people do it because it, it self it fulfills a self thing for themselves, you know what I'm saying? Oh, let me give this guy a dollar because now I feel good. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's kind of selfish. It's gratification. Yes, self gratification. So I'm not gonna say seeking, it's selfish because I don't do it like, nah, oh, I'm gonna do it to some, make it d- because this is my thing. I always because I know where I come from. I know what I've been through. And so you can attest to this. When I see things, my heart is just like So that will fall in self gratification. Self gratification, but also you want to help from I'm not even thinking about self. And, and come on now, you are, you already know I would do stuff at the day. Okay. I'm glad you said that. Because a lot of things where I was helping, I was doing it at the detriment of me, us in the business. So I wasn't getting gratification. I was making decisions for people at the expense of the business, which ultimately is at the expense of our household. So I wasn't getting anything from it. I was helping them because I really saw a need or I saw something but, and I saw the hurt. But but you saying you didn't get nothing from it. But in order to see somebody need, you got to be getting something from it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because where, why do you want to help? Because you've been there, you know the situation, so it's 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 feeling something within you. You you understand what I'm saying? So it's like deep down, it's something deep down rooted that makes you move. I think and it's principles. Do I think it's principles because you know me more than anybody. I don't have to do something for someone to to fulfill me. Many times I take hits to help other people. You know this, even when I know I'm gonna take a hit and it, it's gonna be bad on me. I'm still gonna do it for someone else. So for me, it goes back to to principles. For me, it's the principle of I want to be a child of God in every aspect, not just when it's beneficial to me. You get what I'm saying? Yes. I want I, I want to be pleasing in God's eyes, and that's why I said just because it's good doesn't mean it's me. And I think a lot of people took that for your weakness too. You know what I'm saying? What do you your mean? Your kindness for a weakness. Oh, but but you know, now but, people are going to think I'm mean because it's a total different, again, personal life, have it down to a science. In business, I'm not doing anything that I used to do again. If God doesn't tell me to, I'm not because it got me in trouble many times doing different things and then even at the expense of the business. So it's like, yeah, I'm kind, I'm nice. But I'm no longer going to let people take advantage. I'm no longer just going to be like, oh, amen. Oh, I'm going to do this because this is no, I got to look at the business first. And and before I was looking at the people first. And that's me. me. I never allow people to use me. And I guess that's why they feel like I come off like an asshole because. But you can be. Uh, be an asshole. Mm-hmm. No, because I feel like it, it certain it's, it's nothing wrong from coming. How you come giving the same energy back. I don't. If well, you, I don't if, believe if in giving you, the same. If you know you trying to use this person and they return, give you that same type of energy back, how is that an asshole? But I don't want to see, I guess for me. It's being blunt. No. A lot of people tiptoe. A lot of people no. tiptoe around shit. Uh, you know, I'm maybe next direct. time um, I ain't got it right now. You know what I'm saying? Just to avoid the bullshit. But if I tell you the, the correct way from the first time, it's going to avoid the bullshit for the rest of my life. Cause you ain't gonna come with me with that same shit again. Because I let you know, no, this usury shit is not it. Sometimes so your delivery can be harsh. <laughs> Somebody else just told me that harsh. Who said that? Harsh. Yeah, sometimes you your delivery can be harsh. Ha- you don't think my feelings is hurt? Hold on, you wait. You know what I'm saying? Did like, Dante yeah, told you it's that. Harsh. Oh, 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 you told him. Yeah, it's harsh. Yeah, uh, your your delivery it's, sometimes can be harsh. It's very direct. And it's very honest, but you also got to understand the reader of your message you, or your that's audience. That's my point. People want a pussyfoot around shit. No, no, you can you still what say what you're saying. I said exactly what no. I said. I wasn't, I wasn't rude or disrespectful. I just said how I felt. You know what I'm saying? So if it was harsh, I, I don't understand because that's how I felt. No, okay, it is how you felt, but it's not what you say sometimes. But it's why how do you I say. have to pussyfoot around my feelings? I'm not you know saying, saying you're not that's listening to what I'm saying. Feel, feel like. Like, you're not listening to what I'm saying. You could deliver the same message. But why should I switch it up? Why should I pat it up, coat it up, wrap it up, put it in the Christmas bow tie and deliver the shit? You should know who you t- asking. Well, that's you, the thing, too. If they you don't knew know it, because if you knew me, if you know me, you know how the hell I'm going to respond. But so they it's, it's don't know you. That my was the point, point exactly. So you shouldn't be asking for no goddamn money. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
That's the point I'm getting to. Because get everybody that know me, know me, that I'm going to say how I feel and, and, and move on with it. But you don't know me. But try to taking the time out of your day and understand and, and learn me. You know what I'm saying? So my 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 response wasn't harsh. My response was me. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of people, they cater to the people. Oh, their feelings going to get hurt. So let me let me say like this so they could be ease them down kindly. No, this is how I'm talking, how I respond. You open the door and, and hit me up. So I shouldn't have to filter myself on my feelings. You're missing the point. It's not yeah, about I, your, I probably missed the it, point. It's not about At your feelings. Day, it's going, not about your feelings. Like, okay, let's say, for example, I'm like, um, Demetrius, I need you to go to the store. Or Demetrius, I need you to go to the store. That's like, it's same thing that you're saying, but, but one is nice and one is harsh. One is like but aggressive. Do, am I aggressive? I'm glad you say aggressive. You've been with me damn near 28, 30 years. You always say the way my tone, this and that and that. Yes. And you've been with me for 28 years. So you know my tone and how I, how I respond. I don't mean no malice to it or nothing. This is just how I talk. But I don't, people's I don't think feelings you, yeah, can get hurt. You know what I'm saying? But if you knew me, you would understand that. So it, it's not that I'm coming off harsh. This is me. But that's what I'm saying. They don't know you. And sometimes... Okay, you don't mean any malice or you're not being malicious because in your mind it's just really it's like speaking to a New Yorker. Most people think they're rude, but that's just really the culture of the way they speak. Right. But I also understand if if people keep saying that to you, at some point you do have to self reflect and say, okay, this is me, but there's still some growing that I need to do that not change me, but maybe change my communication and how I speak to people because you can't just keep using excuse. Oh, this is just me. This is just, we could all say that. Oh, this is just me. This is just me. But at what point do you self reflect and say, okay, if this keeps becoming a topic of discussion, there may be a way that I can say that and get that message across without coming off harsh. I really wish I had the message so I could read the, my response because it wasn't harsh. It was. When you know I read it, saying? I was like, uh, it, I wasn't going to tell you that because it, I understood because I was mad. I was actually ready to respond for you. I was mad. But I was like, you gave it to him in a way that it was like, but I understand that you felt even how they got at you was rude to even ask money and how they was asking. And that's my point. So why do I have to be, you know what I'm saying? And I don't know. I just harsh. I harsh. I, don't, I didn't see harsh, but listen, I, my, listen. My you, you didn't see shit. harsh, but if one person told you harsh, and then an hour later I said it's harsh, and because y'all because it, I'm com that's coming from two sensitive ass motherfuckers. We're not sensitive. He's very direct. No, and so am I. you both of y'all let people get away with too much shit. Y'all too kind hearted. So what that's that's mean? coming from two kind hearted people saying too hard shit. You know what I'm what saying? Y'all track record don't don't <laughs> don't work with this shit. I'm sorry. What Y'all do do track record don't what work. Do Y'all you too kind. You know what I'm saying? So of course it's gonna be harsh from two kind people. No, so, we're yes, not kind. Yes. No, we just yes, treat people in the way that we want to be kind treated. And, 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 at at y'all expense. Sometimes That's at, at our expense. At y'all expense. So at the end of the day, no, I'm not the one you gonna you gonna off my expense, no. So it's like, of course, it's coming from y'all. Y'all too kind people. Y'all, y'all too kind. <laughs> Shit. So we we gonna wrap that up. Hold on, really? you ain't gonna take it as confirmation. Is maybe God is saying you're nah, too nah, harsh? No, I'm gonna take it as confirmation because at the end of the day, leave me alone then. Shit. I mean, the way he got at you to me was disrespectful to ask. It's like the audacity. Like, how do you hit me up and ask me for money in this way? So I get it because I'm gonna be honest. I was hot. Yeah, so, I wanted to say something. So, yeah, the, the two kind, I wasn't harsh. And if I was harsh, shit, that's me. My wife been telling me for 30 years. You do. Like, you <laughs> you have to learn. I got to learn how to communicate. With other people. That's, and I, I, I will admit, I'm a bad communicator. So um, that's why I don't really like dealing with a lot of people. Because once I get red hot, it, it's, my communication is out the window. But But that's why you need to work on that. Yeah. Probably my second life or some shit. No. And it's, 
<laughs> in this life. You know they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks. No, I'm an old ass dog, and no, I don't you, need no new tricks. No, but I'm not here to appease people, though. You know what I'm saying? The people like I don't know. But let's wrap this up, though. Close this up. <laughs> Until next time, as I always say, continue to break cycles. <laughs>